What's going on, my friend? Good to see you again. Coach Grant Tylerton here, and today we're going to break down how to ask for the sale, effectively making the perfect pitch on a sales call, right? Because you know that the whole purpose of this channel is to help you make sales effortless so that you can unlock a life of freedom now and create a legacy that you'll be proud to hand down. Now, before we jump in, you need to understand the pitch or asking for the sale is the most widely debated component of sales calls for a very specific reason because if you nail it your prospects are going to be throwing their credit cards at you to pay in full but if you mess it up you are going to have a whole lot of legwork required to be able to handle objections reframe and actually get to the point where we can close the sale all right, and I have seen countless different approaches to this, some that work a little better, some that work a little worse. But in my experience over the past half a decade in taking sales calls, I've developed a process that works so freaking well that every time that I teach it, the the minds basically of my private clients are, are blown. Basically, they explode. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to break down what I used to do. Okay, it was like, what was taught to me by some of the sales gurus as the gold standard of what to do. I'm going to share with you why it doesn't really work all that well, and then I'm going to show you the influence mastery way that my students and my sales teams use to consistently close over 60% of their calls, many of which resulting in pay in full deals rather than, you know, little itty bitty payment plans and stuff like that because at the end of the day, bird in the hand it's worth two in the bush. We both know that. All right, so before we dive in, just wanna let you know, today's video, as always, sponsored by the like button. If you appreciate this content, all that I ask in exchange from you is that you hit that like button and you consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of these videos. I do this for free for you because I really want to make a difference. Clearly, I've got my own sales course full of awesome private clients. If I wanted to, I would just hang out there. All right, but I want to give you the opportunity if maybe you're not quite ready or able yet to have hands-on support to be able to master the art and science of influence, close sales effortlessly, and make more money than you ever dreamed of, that you at least have a starting point here on this channel. All right, so again, all that I ask is that you hit that like button and you consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of these videos. All right, now, first off, like I said, the old gold standard taught to me by the, the gurus, right? Uh, and by the way, no no disrespect to those that brought me up in the sales space because I actually had the opportunity to learn from some of the best in the game. Like I'm talking Jordan Belfort's old top salesman at Stratton Oakmont, Tony Robbins' number one salesman after whom the Eli Award is named. Okay, Great people, great stuff, but times have changed a bit. Okay, So the old standard was basically like this. All right, John, so the investment to no longer deal with pain so that you can accomplish goal and ultimately fulfill purpose is just price. And they always said, shut up, don't say another word. You let that silence sit, that price marinade, you drop it on the table and you let them see it. Just like that, okay? Now this, there, listen, there's a way worse ways to do this. All right, let me be clear. Way worse ways to do it, however, couple things wrong with this old approach what i basically feel like this approach is like those old rainbow sandals that you've had sitting in the closet from five years ago they're just worn through to where your heel scrapes on the ground i mean is it better than nothing yeah technically but we could do a lot better so the beef that i've got with this is two main points right number one unless you are rock solid with your delivery and you can actually hold that silence with power and conviction until the prospect utilizes directional language, right? Not, hmm, ha, ha, eh, but like, oh man, I don't think I can afford that. Or, you know what? Shut up, take my money, I'm in. Which the latter happens quite infrequently if you use that. In most cases, this is just the bridge to moving into objection handling. And most people will tell you, hey, the sale doesn't start until uh, the prospect says no for the first time. Well, uh, statistically, I would rather just be able to prevent objections from ever coming up than have to be really good at handling them. Okay. And when it comes to handling them, clearly at the objection matrix, it's the gold standard. It kicks ass, works really well. But if we can avoid ever even having to do that in the first place, wouldn't you say that's better? So that's issue number one. Okay. Because unless you're rock solid in your delivery and unless you are really good at holding that uncomfortable silence, 
you're going to degrade your authority and you're going to create a lot of sales resistance that you'll then have to work hard to undo and get to the point where you can actually close this deal. Number two, this method is inherently combative in nature. Okay. And please, if you've watched any videos on this channel, you should know by this point that a well-executed sales process is not combative. It is collaborative. Okay. Not combative, but it's collaborative, right? So unless you love trying to strong arm your prospects into a close and you find it super fun to have to go through the entire objection handling process every time you want to collect money on a sale, then maybe consider trying things out a bit differently. All right, so let me introduce you to the influence mastery way. Now, as you'll remember, if you've studied any of my content up to this point and you've gone through, for example, the three-step perfect presentation, you know that each component of the process you have already anchored down and that you have anchored down the process as a whole. For example, like now, John, based on everything we just went through here, is there anything missing from what you were looking for specifically? Or does this feel like the perfect fit for you? to which one of a couple things happens. Not gonna go into all of this, right? Go back and watch the three-step perfect presentation framework so that you can understand the whole purpose of this and how it goes. Ultimately, all roads lead to, yeah, it sounds good to me, and we're asking why, right? Well, why do you feel like this is the right fit for you though? So that the last thing on our prospect's mind is them telling us why they want to buy. Because two things, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. And number two, even more important, if I say it, you doubt it. But if you say it, you own it. So again, last thing on our prospect's mind before going into pricing and logistics is them telling us why they want to buy. Okay, so from there, right? Why is it a yes for you? Oh, well, for this reason and that reason. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to say, okay, cool, John. Well, next steps, super simple. First, your commitment to the process is just price. Okay, your commitment to the process is just price. Now, the reason that we're using commitment, okay, there's basically three different words you could use at this point. It's bad, better, solid, okay? Bad is cost. Why does cost suck? Well, the cost of this is blank because it sounds like I'm doing something to you. Prospect doesn't want you to do something to them, right? the cost is inherently feels painful. Number two is investment. Now investment is a lot more neutral, right? It's just, well, it is what it is. If you're stuck and you have only two options, right? Go with investment other than cost. However, based on trial and error and a whole bunch of data over the past few years of doing this myself, coaching my clients and running sales teams, we get the best results with your commitment to the process, your commitment. The simple reason is that we are reaffirming to the prospect that they are making this choice on their own free will in order to get what they want. That's the key. Remember, collaborative. It is their choice. They are committing to doing this to get what they want, which is diametrically opposed to the cost. That's me doing something to you. Your commitment is you doing something for yourself. Right? So again, next steps, super simple. Your commitment to the process is just price. Then what we're gonna do is future pace them Then the same basic breath, okay? From there, we will do this, do that, do this, so that you can outcome, okay? You need to make that super clear. So just as an example, your commitment to the process is just 6,000. Now from there, we'll introduce you to your head coach and you two will devise the perfect game plan for you to hit the ground running. That way, three months from now, this issue you're dealing with, thing of the past, okay? So we are future pacing what is going to happen for them next, right? So your commitment to the process is just 10,000. Now, from there, within the first 24 hours, you'll be introduced to your full coaching staff that will be with you every step of the way to ensure that as long as you show up, John, there is no possible way that you can fail. Then the last piece is logistics. So we can get that processed uh, with either debit card, credit card, PayPal, whichever works best for you. Which would you prefer? 
Okay, so again, your commitment to the process is just price. From there, we'll future pace so that you can outcome, ideally emotional. Now we can handle that with either debit card, credit card, PayPal, whichever works best for you. Which would you prefer? Doing it this way, I'm telling you, it's not gonna, you're not gonna necessarily feel like this is a massive epiphany until you actually start seeing people throw their card at you ready to pay in full, okay? And topic for another video, a pitch full price, okay? Only if financial concerns are the only thing that's keeping someone held back, which you would identify through the objection matrix, would I then even downsell to a payment plan? This is why my sales teams have record percentages of cash collected in addition to way over double the industry average for call close, okay? This stuff just works. Now, let me just put a bookend on this. From there, one of two things is gonna happen. Either the prospect is gonna agree, indicate their preferred method of payment, and you are going to say specifically this. Great, go ahead and grab your card and I'll get your next step set up for you here. It is a command. It's not, okay, well, would you like to uh, get this processed, get your card? No, okay, go ahead and grab your card and I'll get your next step set up for you here. Just is what it is. You make that command, it's gonna go a heck of a lot better. I gotta remember, I'm on YouTube. It's gonna go a heck of a lot better for you. <laughs> or the prospect is going to voice a logistical concern, read objection. It's totally cool. You just move into the objection handling matrix. Now again, once you really nail this, and please practice the crap out of this until you know it like the back of your hand and you can say it perfectly. Okay, the reps, they matter. Get smooth with it. In the majority of cases, you are actually gonna find that the commitment process is a heck, <laughs> thanks YouTube, a heck of a lot easier. Now, if you appreciate this, again, drop a like, just hit that little thumbs up button, costs you nothing, consuming this content, provided you actually apply it and you practice it until you're smooth, is gonna make you so much money, okay? In addition, if you don't wanna miss out on these, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.